Yellow Mars, hands down, is one of my favorite resin 3D printers of 2019. My experience with it has been that it's a really reliable machine that's able to output some crazy high detailed prints. And at around 300 US dollars, it is awesome because it is an incredibly competitive price point compared to other machines that are out there on the market. And it is just all around a great value for someone looking to get into the hobby or into the technology. For the most part, when I'm doing big printing, I lean on something like one of my FDM printers, and when I need really small, high precision detail printing, that is when I've been leaning on the resin printers or the Elegu Mars. However, there has been a couple of times where I really want to print something, but the Elegu Mars just does not have the build volume for it, or I want to print out like a batch of something where I need multiple, and the build plate's just not big enough to fit more than like one or two pieces when I, in reality, need like six pieces. I definitely know that I'm not alone with this because I know quite a few people that do have Elegoo uh, Mars machines or other similar sized uh, resin based 3D printers that they love their machine but they do wish that they just had a little bit bigger real estate for those times again when they do want to print bigger parts. That brings us to this guy right here, which is the Elegoo Saturn. Now, this is a machine that I had not heard of at all until a couple of months ago. In an update for Chit2Box, there was a profile that was added for this machine. And so there was basically a little thumbnail. It showed some of the uh, build volume on the machine, but there was very little known about this machine other than that it was bigger than the Elegoo Mars. It was their bigger machine that had been rumored to be coming at some point. Completely unexpected, but Elegoo actually reached out to me and said, hey, we've got the Elegoo Saturn and it is not fully complete yet, but it's getting close to being complete and we're looking for some people to test out the machine and provide us with some feedback. So that being said, one, I said, hell yeah, because the Mars is again, is one of my favorite printers. So being able to test out the bigger version of the Mars or the Saturn, I, yes, I was absolutely definitely sign me up. They did want me to uh, be certain to note though, that again, this is not necessarily the final retail version. I would assume that based off of my experience, it is very, very close, but there is still a possibility that there could be some slight changes between this and between what is available when this machine is actually available for order. So today we are gonna look at the Elegoo Saturn. We're gonna talk about the specs. We're gonna take a look at the machine. And then of course, I'm gonna do some printing on it. And we'll take a look at what the prints look like off of this big resin printer behind me. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before going over anything else, let's take a look at the size of this machine. The build volume is 192 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 200 millimeters. The Mars had a 68 by a 120 by a 150 build plate. So this machine is basically three times the size of the build plates in the X axis, and it's got another 50 millimeters in the Z axis. So substantially bigger. With this machine, you'd be able to fit three times the amount of things on the build plate, which is insane. I mean, that's a ton of more real estate on that build plate for, again, bigger prints or for multiples. If you need to print out six of an item and you were only able to fit two, now you can print out six at the same time, which is super cool. Another thing I know people are gonna ask is about the LCD screen. It is not a 4K LCD screen. It is a 2K LCD screen, similar to that of the Elegoo Mars. As mentioned, with this basically being a bigger version of the Mars design-wise, the machine looks really similar. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I had very few gripes with the Elegoo Mars overall. I thought it was a fantastic machine. So having a lot of the similarities, but in a bigger form factor is pretty sweet to me. And you know, it's okay by me. The front of this machine features a three and a half inch touchscreen, which is similar to the Elegoo Mars. It also had a touchscreen on the front of the machine, but the Mars was a two and a half inch touchscreen. So this is slightly bigger. Um, not that I had any issues navigating the touchscreen on the Elegoo Mars, but I'll take an extra inch of real estate. It definitely makes navigating the interface a little bit nicer, but again, it wasn't a deal breaker, but it is a slightly larger um, touchscreen on the front of the machine for 
uh, all of your different settings and navigating the file manager uh, to check and select prints that are on the USB flash drive. So one of the few gripes I had with the Elegoo Mars was the USB port. And now you use the USB port often because you take the flash drive out, you slice the files on your computer, you then bring it over to the machine and then you print with it. Well, on the Elegoo Mars, for whatever reasoning, that USB port was on the back of the machine. Now I did get really good at, with my hand, feeling where the USB port needed to go in, but it certainly was a poor design choice in my opinion. And one thing that I know quite a few people thought was silly and something that they did change with the Elegoo Mars Pro. And I'm happy to announce that also on the Elegoo Saturn, the USB port is no longer on the back of the machine. It is very easy to access on the front of the machine, on the bottom right of the LCD screen. Now, small note, I do think that it is a lot better than where it's located on the Elegoo Mars. However, it is really close to the LCD screen. I do wish that they could have offset it to the left side of the, of the uh, front of the machine, because there is a chance that when you're pushing on the LCD screen, maybe you'd bump it with your arm. It's, it's very unlikely to happen, but I know that somebody out there will do it. So it's definitely a lot better, but I still think that, again, it's not the perfect spot for the USB port to be, but if I had to choose between, between behind the machine or where it's at now, I'm much happier with the location they chose for the Elegoo Saturn. On the back of the machine, you will find two exhaust fans to remove heat from the machine. Um, it is a little bit louder than the Elegoo Mars, but still much quieter than I would expect for a machine that is, again, that much um, bigger in size. I'm actually really impressed. The Elegoo Mars to me was a relatively quiet machine and the Saturn is no different. It is also a very quiet machine. They did a great job with that. Also on the back side of the printer, you're gonna find the on and off switch, the power port, and an ethernet cable. Yes, that's right, there is an ethernet cable. Elegoo let me know that there's actually four gigabytes of onboard storage that you can basically connect from chit to box via ethernet to the machine. Navigating through the machine, it looks like it has the potential for Wi-Fi. I wasn't really able to get that set up. I tried briefly, but didn't dive into it very heavily. Um, maybe that's something that is gonna be an add-on, or maybe it is in there, and with a firmware update, it can be uh, kind of simplified a bit. As of right now, I'm gonna describe it as a work in progress. I've never had an issue with printing directly from a USB drive, so it's not a huge deal to me, but that is something cool that perhaps they will implement a little bit better when the machine is closer to release. So the build plate is nearly identical to that of the Mars, just larger. It's an aluminum plate that pivots forward and backwards and left and right based off of two screws. So you're gonna level it the exact same way. It's very, very easy to do. Even the VAT is incredibly similar. Uh, the one difference between this VAT though and the VAT on the Mars is that this VAT actually has little feet or pegs. So when you take the VAT off and you slide it in on top of the LCD screen, it will like drop into place, which is really nice because you'll know that you're definitely lined up with the LCD screen. The other cool thing about the little standoffs on the VAT is if you take the VAT off of the build plate and set it off the side of your workbench, the FEP film on the bottom of the VAT is elevated ever so slightly. So if you've got any kind of like debris in your workshop or something on your work surface that you maybe didn't see, there's less likely that that will penetrate or damage the FEP film that's on the bottom of your VAT. So I do like the little standoffs, one, because it raises up the VAT a little bit off your build surface when you set it off to the side, and also because it makes it really nice and easy to slot into the correct spot, and you're definitely not gonna have any issues having it offset on accident. So enough about the specs of the machine, enough about the body of the machine. One of the main things we wanna know is how well does it print? Well. I took the machine out, I did the quick leveling, I went ahead and popped in the flash drive and saw that they had a Rook file on the flash drive, which is similarly to the test print that was on the Elegoo Mars. I ran the test print, I filled it up with resin of course first, I ran the test print which was for two Rooks, they looked beautiful hanging there upside down on the build plate, and then I tried to remove them and they were incredibly stuck, like beyond stuck. So. After struggling with them for quite a while, I was able to remove them. One of the rooks I completely damaged, the other one I was, I was able to get off, and quality looked insane. It looked exactly like the rook that came off of the Elegoo Mars, with the difference being is that this one said Saturn. But other than that, I was very, very happy with the quality. One thing I did to kind of try to help with the plate sticking so well to the prints was I went ahead and re-leveled the build plate after that first print and used a slightly thicker paper to increase the gap between the build plate and the LCD screen. Um, and that did seem to help a bit. I'm thinking the reason why they have it where the build plate sticks so hard to those prints for the initial burn-in layers is because if you're printing something that's really big, like full volume and solid, that's a lot of weight, which is gonna put a ton of pull on the actual build plate or the bottom of the part. So by having it stick on that hard, it's 
pretty much going to ensure that that, that part is not going anywhere. It is not going to shift or fall off. So next it was time to print something of my own. I browsed mini factory, found this awesome like skeleton warlord king called Razoon and I downloaded it. I imported it into Chitubox. Chitubox has a built-in profile for the other goose Saturn. So it's super easy to just click Saturn. It drops in all of the uh, specifications that you need. I dragged in the model. I scaled it up to full size. I hollowed it out. I sliced it. I put it on the flash drive. I then filled the vat pretty much like halfway to three quarters of the way with resin and I hit print and I fingers crossed after going from the tiny little rook to a like full size print that it was going to turn out okay. So I went away and I came back 20 hours later and it was hanging there in all of its glory. It looked insane. Removal of this was a bit easier than the initial ones after I re-leveled, but it still was stuck pretty hard. Um, I actually posted something on Twitter about it and Chelsea over at Chaos Cortec, who's also been testing out this machine, said that she ran into a similar uh, uh, experience with the parts on this machine that they're sticking way too hard. And so she recommended that in Chitubox, I change the initial couple layers burn in time from I think the default 60 seconds to maybe somewhere around 30-ish seconds. So that's something that definitely moving forward, I will experiment with. And I'm sure that that will help to, again, ensure the parts don't stick quite so hard. But this print, because it had a um, supports underneath it was much easier to remove than the Rook that did not have any supports. I took the print off the bed and started to remove the supports. That was a lot of work. I will say that big prints are awesome, but big prints also means big supports. If you've got uh, a part that does require supports, it took me quite a long time. And even where it's at now, I probably could spend some more time like sanding things or filing things down, but I was relatively happy where things were left off. And again, the print just looked awesome. I left some supports underneath it because um, it's a bust and its base is slanted because it's meant to have another part printed. So there's still some supports underneath it that are just having it where I can set it down on a surface, but it looks super cool. And I don't know if I will, but it would be a really fun model to try to airbrush or do some painting with because of the crazy level of detail um, that that part offers. So I wanted to do one other big print. Um, I printed out the Eiffel Tower on the Elegu Mars. And so I wanted to print it much larger on the Elegu Saturns. So I grabbed the Eiffel Tower model, dragged it in, scaled it up to max capacity, and I hit print. Again, this was about a 20 to 22 hour print. For all the prints I sliced, I sliced them at 100 micron layer height. That's been my standard for resin 3D printing, and I think that that's a good middle ground for really high quality, but not taking an eternity to print out. So I can print pretty much most of the build volume in about 20 to 24 hours, uh, which is not bad. To me, that's actually really good. So uh, again, the Eiffel Tower turned out really, really nicely. About halfway up the Eiffel Tower, there is a little like railing that does have some pretty obvious sag on a couple parts of it. Um, the little posts that hold that up just seem like they're way too fine to be able to support that. I remember I had the exact same issue um, on the Elegu Mars, so I don't think that's a printer thing, but more of actually a the model thing. So um, overall though, those prints turned out absolutely awesome and I cannot wait to add this to my lineup of resin 3D printers. I definitely plan on using the Elegu Mars a ton still, but the Saturn is gonna come into play where I need a part that is a bit bigger, but still need really high detail. Or again, if I'm doing batch printing where either like I want to sell some parts and I need them printed out quickly, that's a really good way to print out multiple parts very, very quickly. And I know that a lot of you guys are probably gonna wanna know, hey, what's the price on this machine? Well, I did reach out to Elegu knowing that that would certainly be one of the questions that people would wanna know. And I was told that the price has not been decided upon yet, which is unfortunate, but as soon as there is pricing, as soon as there is pre-order, or a page, a landing page that I can send you guys to, check in the description of this video because I certainly plan on sending you guys that way to be able to find out more information or pre-order or purchase if that is something that you decide to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I make a video literally every single Saturday. I've been so proud of myself for kicking out a video every Saturday this whole year. And thank you guys so much for being supportive. The channel's had a boost lately and it's thanks to all of you guys. Uh, if you do wanna support the channel even more so, links will be in the description over to my Patreon. There's some super cool rewards and it really, really helps out the channel. On that note, I hope you guys again are doing amazing. And I do plan on doing some uh, quite a bit more printing on this machine over the next month or so here. So I will be revisiting this machine and showing off all the prints that I've done on it and giving you guys an update on what my experience has been over the course of time printing with this machine. So look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. And on that note, I am out. Peace guys.